You don't get that advantage much anymore. But thank God that most of the people who get saved, I notice, here at Dickory Grove, uh, are usually in our regular services. When revivals come, there's some people get saved. But usually we're all up and we have a great time in a revival. But that's because we're here all the time. And a revival only happens once a week or once a year, twice a year, or three, two times a year or whatever. But a church ought to be in revival in every service that we come into. It ought to be a revival. It ought to be a revival for the church to just get drive in and get filled up. It ought to be a revival for the church to get inspired, to be on fire when the revival comes. Because no preacher ever packed any suitcase to revival. A revival is prayed down from heaven by the church where the preacher is going to go preach. Now he might have preached down, he prayed out his messages and all those things. But these signs tonight are vividly before us and they're right in our face. But yet the world cannot see these signs. They don't believe them. You know, death is a sign of death. And I've been on a journey now for 77 and a half years. And by God's grace and by God's love and by God's mercy, I've made it this far. But I don't know how much farther I'm going to make it in this world. But one thing I do know, I have preached enough funerals. I have lost enough people. I have seen enough people go before me. I have stood by so enough people to feel them go out into eternity and witness it that I know that I'm not going to escape but only one way. And that's if Jesus comes back before my journey has ended here. And it will end in the great rapture of the church then uh, that's fine with me. But if not, and it holds off, I know that I'm going to be like everybody else that's ever been born, or ever will be born, and that's not caught up in a rapture, we're going to die. Now, we sometimes hear about the death rate. There's no such thing as a death rate. Wars don't increase the death rate. Diseases don't increase the death rate, because everybody that's born is going to die. And so therefore, it's one-on-one. -on -one. I hear folks talking about you got three chances in so many to win the lottery and so many in a million to win the big lottery and all that sort of stuff. And of course, I am already rich. I don't need the lottery. I don't need to gamble because I'm trusting a God that owns it all. And when I have a need, God supplies it. And I don't have to go out and buy a ticket for it. But all i got to do is go in the closet and say, Lord, I'm running short. And I ain't going to make it unless you help me. And so far, all these years, and the Lord has supplied my every need. God didn't promise me He's going to make me rich, but He promised me He'd supply all my needs according to His riches and glory. Now, today we should be telling people that Jesus Christ is coming back. We should be telling people that when they die, it's all over. That's the end of the world for you. You don't have another opportunity or another time. I know that sometimes people have opportunity after opportunity to find the Lord. But that's not always possible because the thief on the cross, he had one opportunity. He had one place, one time, one chance to receive Jesus Christ. The other thief that hung on the other side, he had the same opportunity. He squandered his opportunity. He just let it slip away. And so therefore he didn't receive Christ. Didn't, he didn't connect. But he railed upon Jesus. And that's what the world's doing today. They're railing upon Jesus Christ. They're trying every way in the world. Yes, there's a war tonight, they say, on religion. But there's not a war on religion tonight. There's a war on Jesus Christ and those that believe in Jesus Christ. If religion's all you got, you've got nothing to worry about as far as persecution. You're not going to be persecuted if that's all you've got. But if you've got Jesus Christ, you had best believe that there's going to be some persecution along the way. And we haven't seen anything yet what's likely to come. Now, if you remember Jonah, when God went and spoke to Jonah, we need preachers today to quit running from God and stand and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're trying to sweeten up the pot that you're going to get $10,000 for your $1,000. Quit trying to sweeten the pot. Now, let me tell you something. Jesus Christ is sweet enough for me, and I'm not worried about the $10,000. And, and you know how to play the lottery is play that game. Amen? You say, well, now, preacher, you don't understand. Brother, I've got sense enough to know that the best way to double your money is to fold it up and put it in your pocket. Amen? Amen. Don't come and give me $1,000. Then I'm going to give you $10,000 back. Or somebody 
nothing down the road is going to give you 10,000. You give to God what belongs to God, and it may not look like you're going to have potatoes on the table tomorrow, but somehow or another, down through the year, there's always been some potatoes on my table. There's always been a little cornbread, and there's always been a little something, and a lot of times, a way more than I ever deserve. And all oh, praise the Lord tonight because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jonah, a God came to him and told him. Now I don't know if you ever studied or ever read or ever heard about this city of Nineveh. If the Assyrians, they lived in Nineveh. The Assyrians were the most uh, hedonistic, ungodly, uh, deg degraded people on the face of the earth. There are things tonight that they engaged in that I wouldn't even I must hardly think about before a mixed audience let alone preach about it and name what they did. And you can imagine what it was. It was everything and every sin that the devil could produce was going on in that city. There was all those people that didn't know the right end from their death. But they knew one thing, they knew how to sin. Did you ever notice you don't have to teach people how to sin? You have to teach them how to drive a car. You have to teach them their job at work. You have to teach them to be a nurse. You have to teach them all, everything that's going on. You have to teach them the Word of God. But somehow or another, people don't have to be taught how to sin. Then, brother, anything that don't require some teaching, anything don't require something from you, you better stay out of it. 